It's a new, it's a new, new, new. All right, new products. All right, first up, just a reminder, adafruit.com slash open safely. We are open, ship and safe. Ship and smart, you saw our footage. We're not just faking this. We're here, we're not going away. We've been through the worst. We hit it, got hit first. We are shipping every single day. We are doing this thing. Thank you everybody for all your orders. First product. Okay, first product is, as we were just talking about SPI Flash, we now have two megabyte SPI Flash chips in the store. These are really popular for us. We use them on a ton of CircuitPython boards. Um, Non-volatile, two megabytes of memory. Um, the price can't be beat. You don't have to worry about SD cards. They're not that big, but maybe like you don't need more than a couple megabytes of space. So they're a really great um, in-between, you know, an EEPROM that's usually only maybe like half a K or a couple K. An SD card, which is like gigabytes, but is much more expensive. Um, and this, you know, these chips are really well supported in Arduino. They're supported in CircuitPython. Um, they're just an easy way to add a little bit of storage. The reason we put them in is I'll show on the overhead. Um, the new Cutie Pie board that we put in the store has a spot on the bottom to solder in an SPI flash chip. And these SIYC SPI flashes are, are fairly easy to solder. I think a beginner could do it. Um, and then you would have a little bit more storage for this little microcontroller board. We tend to use these for storing like audio, video, fonts, graphics, animations, you know, anything that's like a file that you don't want to, you know, flash onto the, the memory of the chip itself. It's like a, you know, accessory. Um, that's where we would use SPI flash chips. It also yeah. does QSPY, but we tend to use it for SPI. All right, next up. Mm, this was... A request, we had a couple people email us and say, hey, I broke the camera connector on my Raspberry Pi. Do you sell a replacement part? And I said, uh, not yet, but I will. So this is just the replacement part for the camera or display connector on Raspberry Pi. This thing, you see this thing? You have it, and people sometimes break them. It happens. You, you crank a little bit too hard. You pull too much. So now, you know, we stock these parts. So you'll have to desolder and remove the old part. But it's, you know, for some people, they have tools or they're, they can't use a Raspberry Pi anyways, why not try to fix it? Also, if you like crack the little, um, the piece on the top that does the press fitting, you could like gently remove that and uh, recycle that as well. So I think this will be um, handy for folks who would like to fix up some old pies that are maybe a little sad. And I have one little note. Yeah? I think we can all, we all have a friend that, you know, sometimes, you know, if you've ever been with a friend and they're like, Maybe they're I don't have friends. back back when everyone Definitely used to go to friends. restaurants. Yeah, and you know you knew someone, and they're and they were like they kind of be mean to the uh, wait staff or something. Yeah, and you're like, hey, don't do that. No, don't do that. Does yeah. Or if you see that happen, you're like, don't do that. So if you ever hear or see a friend who sees a picture of something, that um, you know, one of the things someone's gonna say, oh, I thought there was a Raspberry Pi included. So I think this is a good thing to just you know maybe help each other. If you see or know someone, because there's nobody who's watching our show. They know that. But we, it does happen. We have to say, we, like, we, this is why we have to say, like, it does yeah. not include the thing that obviously so doesn't include. when you see, like, bold text on our product pages, sometimes we're like, why did you have to put that, obviously, that connector to Raspberry Pi? It's, it's 75 cents. Why are you telling people that the Raspberry Pi is not included? It's because sometimes people, if they see a picture of something, they're like, oh, there must, that must be included. We don't include human hands. We don't include a quarter. Great. We, yeah. th we if we if, when we have a water sensor, we don't include the the, the glass of water. Yeah. So it's just one of those things. So anyways, Raspberry Pi not Raspberry Pi not included. Raspberry Pi not included. Okay, but next. it's a great way to fix your Raspberry Pi. Yeah. Next up. Um, okay. Next up, we've got this part lift for the stick vise. This is a very useful part. You never knew you needed. Um, it's an accessory for the stick vise, which is quite popular. And, and this is what it does, right? So you, you, you go to solder in your through-hole parts. You put the through-hole part in, and then you have to flip the board over to solder it in. And what happens? The through-hole part falls out. That's a good idea. Terrible. Mm -hmm. So what this is is a little springy piece, um, and it's very light and springy. It's got like a, a grippy end to it. And all this is just hold that part in place so that you don't have the problem of like, well, you're holding it with one finger, and then your finger gets hot, or you tape it, and the tape melts. Why? Why torture yourself? Comes in a pack of two. Um, you don't need to use it with stick vice. You can use it with other vices, but it's like the right height for a stick vice. So I do recommend that for it. Yeah. And this just proves to me that on a long enough timeline, 
we're probably going to turn into octopus because, like, you, you know, yeah, we, I we need like four hands. We need so many things like this to do the things we want to do. Um, you know, we've had our run as bipeds. I do think that the octopus, they're just going to, they're just waiting. They're just waiting. Yeah, okay. do you want me to show on the overhead? Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's got some nice things going on. So first, bottom has grippy rubber on it. Yes, it does not. It's not, it's like, it doesn't move. This tip has uh, grippy rubber on it. And this is like very, it's springy, but it's like soft. Like it's not going to crush your parts. Yeah. You can use it for delicate sensors or connectors. Mm -hmm. It's a very nice design, and it's got this, like, cool coronavirus-looking thing going on here. <laughs> but it's not. It's just it's just springy. So I like these. I'm going to use these on my desk because I use the stick vise, and it is a problem. Like, I hate having to hold the through-hole yeah. part with one finger, and then that finger gets burnt. It's handy. And it happens every time. I never learn my lesson. Okay, next up. Next up, we have a um, big sister to the LSM 6D Socks. Uh, these are extremely stable, high-quality IMU chips from ST. Um, you know, if you're using an MPU 6050 still, come on, upgrade. You can do better. Um, these aren't that much more expensive, and the quality is like 10 times, 20 times better. The stability is really good. The gyro doesn't drift. Um, it's very fast. You can get very high speeds out of it. And what's nice about the LSM 6DS32 is the accelerometer goes up to, as you might have guessed, 32G. So most accelerometers or IMUs only have 2, 4, 6, 8, whatever, up to 16G. This one has double the G, 32Gs. So this is good for like sports or rocketry or like anything with impact where you have um, high G motion. The, the gyroscope is the same. It's still a very good gyroscope. I think it goes up to 2000 DPS. Um, and it works great with our, our with our Arduino or CircuitPython code. It's actually pretty much the same sensor. You can tell it's like all the initialization code is the same as the DSOX. Um, it just, the accelerometer is just scaled by two because it goes up twice as high. Yeah. Um, next up, a tiny mechanical dinosaur. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Jurassic Park. <laughs> These are, um, you have actually always kind of wanted to have automatic wire strippers and then they, somebody was like, how come you don't have them? And I'm like, I don't know. So these are kind of neat. Um, I'll explain how they work because they're a little bit complicated. Um, they're simple to use, but like there's a lot that you can do and I want to explain them all. Hey. So normally you use hey. wire strippers that have, are you making noises? Hey. <laughs> it hey. doesn't look like it's saying, hey, hey, hey. hey. Um, you just flip between the two while I'm talking. Um, normally you have a wire stripper that has multiple holes that like match perfectly to the gauge of wire and you have to kind of know what gauge wire you're using and you put the wire in a hole and you strip it. But if you're doing a lot of wire stripping or you want to have all the wire ends be the same length, you want something like an automatic stripper. So this tongue piece, which is what it uses to say hey. Hey. So you'll see here it has inches and here it has millimeters. So this is like the stop. You set this to how long you want the stripped piece to be. And so when you squeeze the handle, you see that part gets um, stripped off. So I'll demonstrate with some wire. Okay, I've got some. There is this, um, I think when Transformers were kind of ending in the 80s, they are just like, they had to do dinosaurs because everyone was getting dinosaurs. Yeah, yeah. So they had Transformer dinosaurs for That's a while. Cool. This kind of reminds me of that. Yeah. Okay. So you have your wire. And so it's like, okay, I know I'm going to strip off this much wire. And then you see these little teethy, these dinosaur teeth grip it. And then these dinosaur teeth will strip the wire cleanly. Yeah. And it's actually, it's a little bit longer. Oh, you know what? I think there was extra... All right, okay, so next up you want to cut wire. There's uh, down here these little nippers, and um, they're extremely strong, so these are like extra hardened. So let me try this again. I think one thing is that I'm kind of holding it in a weird way. Let me see if I can. Okay, now we've got better grip. Okay, so yeah, you're whatever. Out of, you're out of frame there, but you <sighs> do it again. Hold on, hold on. I want to do this right. I'm going to give myself a little bit more room. Have, have it show its little Tyrannosaurus Rex arm. Look at this little thing. Yeah. Okay, so it's the wire cutter. So then you put it up to the uh, the tongue part. Now, it, you know what? Hold on. I apologize. This is actually a little difficult to do under the, the camera. Okay. 
there you go. All right, so every time you do the wire stripping action, you're gonna get basically the same length because you've got that tongue as the stop. And then just measure the distance. You can read the distance off of here. It's from like this spot. So you can't have anything with less than like two millimeters, but it can go up to about 20 millimeters. Um, there's also like a tension adjust here, but I usually don't mess with that. It can do 24 gauge up to 10 gauge. So it's not for your 30 gauge wires. For 30 gauge wires, you'll need something. Arr. I don't like the my hand. Ah. Uh, <laughs> you know, this is not good for very thin wires like 30 gauge or 28, but um, it has been uh, great for 24, 22, 20 gauge, which is what most. Uh, stranded and solid core wire is and it likes to eat wires and another cool thing is because the um hi, sorry now you're having fun there because the jaw is so wide you can strip multiple wires at a time so you put you know if you have a ribbon cable you have multiple wires you put them all in at once and it'll just it'll just grip them all and strip them all at the same time so it's like you're like why is this so wide well one so it's easier to line up but also because you can strip multiple wires um that said it's you know what's nice is you don't have to worry about like did i get like the right hole and do I, how do I get the exact same length every time. Um, whenever I worked on Burning Man projects, like where I had to strip like 575 wires, I would use a pair of these. So for that, it's definitely useful. Okay. Okay. The star of the show tonight besides the community, the customers are there. Our Adafruit team is Cutie Pie. Cutie Pie is in stock. Okay. So I, they're in stock. They're on, I put them on sale even. So if you want one, get one now. Yeah, let me just tell you about that. So with the way shows, we had to move them around and discount codes, it was just really hard to manage it. So we said, oh, well, on, during the show, we'll just make it on sale. So the cutie pie will not be this price later. And I know I sound like one of those guys hawking collectible coins, but I really, <laughs> this is a beautiful quarter dollar. You don't um, get the quarter. The quarter's the, not included. The Adafruit Mint will only make 5,000 of these. For the Cutie Pie... Okay, so here's what you get. Yeah, so is it di it's the price that's on the site right now live. You're watching live. Um, what We're, is it? It's five bucks. It's five bucks. It's not going to be five bucks. It's not going to be five bucks much longer. But, um, you know, Early Bird gets the Cutie Pie. So this is, uh, you know, it's a little bit like a trinket. It's smaller than Itsy Bitsy. It's kind of, it's a cute board, and it can run Python, so that's why it's called the Cutie Pie. It also has a STEM QT connector. It's one of our first little boards that has that. Uh, and that makes it great for plug and play projects that use any of our STEM QT boards. And it can also connect to Grove sensors with an adapter cable. It can connect to any SparkFun quick boards as well. Um, it's perfect, it's the perfect size because like no other connector would fit on a board this small. So it's a SAMD21 uh, E18. You know, it's actually so small. Can you just actually go to like? Uh, yeah, but you know what? We, it's just. Yeah, but I wanna I wanna try this out a little okay. bit because because we got this overhead, and I feel like, I feel like, it's not a, it's not, it's not that I don't like our beautiful photos, but you know we're doing a live demo here. I am. And yeah. and you know the thing is like, USB C, Stemma, uh, NeoPixel, Kesselated pads, reset button, Kesselated pads, five bucks. So again, you know how we have that friend who's like, I'll just get a cheap thing on Amazon. Get the cheap thing on Adafruit. It's five bucks. It's five bucks and it's like amazing. Yes, and it has everything you've ever wanted. So it's yeah. got USB-C, so you can uh, plug it any which way you want. And it's got a SAMD21, so it's like, for Arduino's projects, it's amazing. It's got great support. We've written, we've written so many tutorials and projects and libraries for the SAMD21. Uh, it's got 256K of flash and 32K of RAM. So, you know, compared to like an Arduino Uno, it's got eight times as much of everything. Uh, there's a regulator that can supply 500 milliamps of current. There's a NeoPixel LED, which I will, oh, you know, the NeoPixel will not light up because I programmed it. Um, there's a NeoPixel LED here, so it's got full color and you can turn off the NeoPixel with a power pin. It's got a reset button, so you can get to the bootloader or you can reset your project very easily. Yeah. And it's got that stem. I'll show you this real quick. Yes, thank you for the NeoPixel demo. Because I just realized I, I reprogrammed this. Yeah. And then, so let me show, I'm going to have to back this up so I can show off why I think the QT connector is, is so key. Okay, so I'll focus. Great. All right. So I'm going to plug this, sorry, I'm going to plug in a. 
uh, PCT 2075 so is the temperature sensor. And notice it's like it just plugs in with this cable. And then I'm going to chain onto the end an OLED display like that. And I'm going to plug this in. And I'll, I'll, I'll rearrange everything so it's all visible. So USB-C, so it's like I don't have to worry. Did I, did I plug in the cable the right way? It's always the right way. Let's see if this will work. Okay, great. So um, now I've got the uh, STEM QT, the temperature sensor, and the OLED all connected together without any soldering. I just write some Arduino code, or even you, know, you can write some CircuitPython code, and it will, um, in this case, uh, display the temperature. So when I put my finger on it, the temperature goes up a little bit because I'm warmer than the ambient air. Um, it's also got castellated pads, so you can like embed this into a project or product if you like. Um, on the bottom is an optional SPI flash spot. So if you want to add two megabytes of flash, you solder onto the bottom. We may eventually sell a version that has the flash on it, but you know, so people have the nice flat version by default, and then they can add the SPI flash for a couple bucks if they would like. But we've got like 50 or even 60 now plug and play boards you can use from, you know, air quality sensors to um, real time clocks to OLEDs. We've got like a, a big box here of just like distance sensors and yeah. this is accelerometers. And, and one note and that um, Eric put in the chat. So um, GPS units. Eric pointed out, yeah, this, this is a well made board. It is. Thank you. But on top of that, this is still less than like a crummy Arduino clone that doesn't work. Like, you know, because everyone's like, oh, why would I, why did I just get that? You could do so much more with this. And so this is one of those ones where it's like, if you're thinking about getting into electronics or you know someone, this is a really low cost way. And one of the things that we did with Trinket a long time ago when we released Trinket was we started putting in, it was a free tier in our freebies. And a lot of people weren't scared to do projects because, oh, well, like nine bucks, 10 bucks, if it like yeah. dies in a project, it's not a $45 dev board. Or I can do lots of things with it. So for five bucks, well, at least five bucks for right now, um, you can do almost anything and not care what happens. And but, you don't have to worry about it. You don't even solder it. Like There's no yeah. soldering required to build most projects. You can just plug and play with any of our I2C boards, and you'd be surprised. Like A lot of sensors and devices are I2C now. So you can, you know, I, I have also one over here. I soldered headers too, and you know you can plug it into a breadboard, and then you can control a yeah. TFT, or you can do more advanced stuff because you get, you get a lot of pins. You get, um, you know, uh, analog output A zero, A one is analog input. Zoom in. Zoom in. Zoom in. You love to zoom in. Oh, yes. uh, analog output on A zero, analog in on A one, analog in on A two and A three. I squirt C. You got UART, which can also do analog, SPI. Um, these can all do PWM. You can do I2S. You've got, you know, one of each I2C UR SPI hardware support. Um, so it's very easy to interface with like any hardware you like. You, you can play little audio clips in Arduino. You can um, control displays. You can just have sensor data output yeah. serial and then you can just plug into your computer and then you know, use it within processing or uh, Unity or, or what have you. So I think it's. Yeah, you know, I wanted to have a, a trinket-like board with a QT connector, and this just was the perfect size. It's yeah. based off of the Seedwino shell, which is the same pinout, so you can use the same accessories. It's got the same chip, um, but it's a little bit different because this one, of course, has a reset button, yeah. NeoPixel, and um, QT plugs. That's why the layout's a little bit different because I wanted to fit. You know, for me, it's like if it doesn't have a reset button or NeoPixel, it's kind of tough to use. I really like to have... Um, an RGB indicator because it kind of tells you if the bootloader is running. Uh, it's also used in Circuit Python to indicate like the state of the runtime, like if it's crashed yeah. or if it needs your attention. Also, it's a great thing for beginners because you can do something like the Hello World blink on it. Yeah. So uh, it's 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 practically a free board. Five dollars is kind of amazing. Anyways. We'll probably have it be a freebie soon too. Yeah, probably. Once so we get more stuff. that is Cutie Pie. Yay! It is cute. It runs Python. If you want one, pick, pick it up now because it's gonna. I, we didn't notify yeah. some of the uh, signups, and we will as soon as we're done with the show. This new product.